Drop some emotes. I'll drop my own emotes. We're dropping a little bit of everything. Let's see him. Let's see him. Alright. So, where's Riot at? Blue team. Okay. <clears throat> Just remember some of your questions, Riot, if anything comes up. Um. Because <laughs> I'll keep the emote on for now. Hit some thrust. That's just unfortunate. Just trying to have to jump like that. Oh, I'll play that guy though. Good little thrust around. Maybe you want to get up top. Oh yeah, definitely just take your time to get up there. At this point, when things are going like this, because like you're doing things right, like the moment, like after you drop down and got that kill, like this is this is all good. But once your teammate got that pull, you definitely want to get up top with that railgun. Get railgun here. You got that kill. Even if like of course you wanted to try to get up top the first time, like as I saw. But even after you messed up, like maybe just take the moment here. And two of your teammates died too. So if this is me, I'm probably like turning back around. I would have seen that like my teammate died behind me. You could even maybe killed that guy. He does have camo though, so it would have been hard. But if this is me and I don't see the guy, I just go straight up top and then either try and help my teammate tower or I just start looking around a little bit just to see what's going on and get some easier picks. Because um, you're definitely taking yourself out of the play or out of just this whole engagement of what's going on. Like you're not really taking care of this guy running the flag. You're not really helping your teammate out who's running the flag. You're just kind of in between and down low, which, in this situation, yeah, see, so that's just what's going to happen. You, you've you been down and around that place for so long that you just end up getting caught off guard. Cause you, don't, you don't really have much to work with. You don't have too much to work with. So, try to get back up top, maybe even, you know, after you miss this jump. You bonk your head, that sucks. Um, unfortunate, but if this is me, I probably just double back, make the jump again, or I make try to make this jump. Maybe still post up, like you're a little bit higher, you're still in an okay spot here to like look front red. Don't see anybody, just get up top, bridge. Uh, just anything to get up top out of the spot that you were just in. That's what I would suggest in that situation. Here, actually, this is what I was going to do. I was actually going to do this. I was going to do this. We're going to make you a mod, Riot. I was going to actually make you a mod. And now you should be able to talk. During emote only. As well. <coughs> Wait, I need to watch your respawn. <coughs> Fast forward. Okay, spawn blue, two dead. Go to tower. Another guy dead. Did. Wait, I need to rewatch this again. I was about to say, I think you could have turned. You definitely should have turned into your base if you knew the teammate in the base was taking a fight, but he might have just died as soon as you left. Oh. Uh, wait, is your teammate running flag? Oh, dude. Alright, so this is like one thing to always keep in mind, I'd say, especially in like these situations in flag games, is like, make sure your flag guy is secure before moving out. Like, you didn't even check, you just, I think you just assumed, like 100% assumed, my flag guy is good, he's on our side of the map, and you just sort out. And you could have even turned around, you thrust slid out, but if I saw this, and I hear shots, and I see in the kill feed that my teammate just died, I'm instantly turning back around, because I imagine this guy is about to get that return. And he's even camo, too. So that would have been a huge pick if you just helped your teammate and looked right around. But see, now you're essentially doing the same thing, just way, way further out. Try to go top mid? Yeah, going top mid's great, but keeping your flag guy alive when a camo guy is just solo running it down at him, like, that should have been an instant kill. Maybe your teammate still dies. Um, 
Maybe your flag guy still dies here, but you have a perfect opportunity to just get the cleanup on that camo guy that's pushing him. Just instantly. Like, just for a second. This is this is the same thing. Like, you literally spawned in, you're already sprinting. Like, you're literally spawned in, already pressing your sprint button. Like, literally just take an extra second, turn, and then, okay, if he was fine, then you can push out. But if you noticed, you would have seen these light rifle shots. Or even if you walk out, you walk out and you're turning, like you want to go tower or treehouse, but then you turn just for a split second just to check, and then you would have seen this guy just out in the open here. Just free as kill. Free, like free as anything ever right here to get that clean up. <clears throat> Going top mid, obviously this is okay, this is fine. But now two of your teammates died, flag's still down, it hasn't been touched in a while. And now you're front base for that kill. So that could have just been a lot. So let me put it, let me frame it this way because I think a lot of people mix up being efficient and just being fast. Because like what you did, like you're being fast. Where you just instantly thrust, started sprinting, thrust lit out, got the tower, got the top mid. Like you think you're being efficient, you think you're being productive. Usually that is the case, but there are circumstances and, and situations where that's not always the case. Like just being forward like that isn't what you want to do. Is like that could have easily turned into your teammate not coming back, and that camo guy just getting a free return, um, with neither of you guys being able to do anything. Um, all right, let me also turn off emote only. It's been a few minutes now. So, you definitely need to recognize those moments where you can just take a literal one second, half a second. Doesn't even need to be that long. Make sure you're fine. All right, then push out. You don't even have to sprint. You can still be forward, and you don't even have to sprint. Don't try to play like pound. I think Adam definitely knows the way he, he plays, and he knows he's definitely... Like I said, it doesn't always apply to top players, because I feel like top players know when to be aggressive, for sure. Top players, for sure, know. Um, yo, Forever Diego, what's good? And hello, chat. I will say hello to chat. So... He tried to get better internet. <laughs> there you go. Migran said it himself. Get, get some better internet. Riot, I guess. Um, so yeah. Being efficient doesn't always mean being fast. I think that's just one thing I want to say right off the bat. I said that to a lot of players because I feel like that's just like the biggest thing for a lot of non-top level players. They just be aggressive for the sake of being aggressive, not for... Not for actual efficiency and progression on the map and doing effective things. But that was good. You still lived. And you played your life, held the wall for a second to get your shields, and you were able to catch that guy off guard. So that's good. Go up in the tower or treehouse here. Moving forward. Check top mid. Checking around you. Okay. Fortunately, you got the melee, but that just happens. That's just kind of standard. Wasn't too much you could really do there. Um, I think, okay, so yeah, this is one thing I can't say about the situation. I, I could kind of tell where it was going. I don't know, like, we'll have to watch it through, but one thing in general that I feel like how this movement will or what will result from this type of movement off of respawn is you already have two teammates over here and your teammate's perfectly fine with flag. Like, he's perfectly safe and he has, like, a buffer or, like, a teammate to just work off of and keep him alive. But you really don't want to be stacked in this way. This is definitely, like, you want to be complimentary here. You want to work off of your teammates, um, especially in a stalemate. Maybe you help... Uh, from a position that can still kind of be effective, like porch here. Like, work your way out, because if they happen to get overloaded, you can instantly just come back in and wrap behind these guys if they're pushing through tower. But just something to keep in mind is being three stacked on elbow is going to result in some, some rough things, but let's just see how this works out. Because, see, your teammate just died from that guy on porch, and now you're just stuck here. You're stuck in this position, because if you were probably playing port side, you could have gotten first shot or first couple shots, 
and flag is even just got returned. So if you played your life here and just kind of sat here for a second, you might just actually catch this guy off guard if you just wait for him to push in, or you just even poked out a little bit. You just want to get some information. You wait to see what your teammates are doing. You might have recognized your teammate was one shot um, when he had flag. And because now you're just you're just in a fight that's just kind of useless. Like it does get like of course it feels like you're doing something here because you are, but there's something much more important behind you that's going down. This guy just sneaks on through and he's about to probably kill you. He's probably about to kill you, and he's about to get the return, practically for free. Like you were you were the anchor. You were like the back line that needed to survive and make sure things just didn't go to complete shit. Um, but, like I said, you kind of just instantly started moving to your teammates when you're, they were kind of already working with each other and they were still pretty safe. Um, it's one thing if you have a lot of information. So what you did there is okay in a particular situation if you know that there's just no way. There's no way this guy would be here because there's, I don't know, three dead and you know the last red guy is this guy. Okay, then maybe you can just push out elbow, kill that guy, rather than being posted up, like, just kind of being passive. But in this situation, when it's a stalemate, and you already have teammates over here, you don't really need to be here. It wasn't, it's not really, like, a terrible play, but this is definitely the play that costed you guys that cap. So, you just gotta be more aware of where your role is, because you kind of just got a couple shots in. It's great that your teammate actually just made that play, so your teammate just salvaged that. He essentially just did your job when he was the one out here. He just instantly went back, wrapped back around, and capped that flag. But he could have been the one just kind of, maybe he even died. They could have both died on elbow. But you would have probably already killed that guy on porch and capped. Um, so, so definitely it, in like hindsight, when you're in the game, it feels like you're doing something by just being with your teammates, but that's not always like the case. Being with your teammates does not mean like you are making the best play. Now, if you're being complimentary, like I said, you have your teammates in mind. That's usually what you want to be doing. You want to always have your teammates in mind, but you don't always need to be right on top of them. Teammates are dying in base. They haven't pulled the flag yet, though, so this is good. Get up top quick. Don't really need to use your thrust slide there. So this is... Uh, this is, like, the problem I have with people thrust sliding a lot. Is, like, if you just happen to... I don't know. Because, like, this is just what I think would happen to me. This is what happens in my eyes. Is like, you thrust slide top mid. A, you don't even get shots on this guy. You almost kill him, too. You almost five him after thrust sliding. Like, you get top mid... And you just instantly turn thrust slide. There, you don't even know if a guy's like waiting top mid or treehouse, just waiting for you to be up here. Yeah, or somebody just jumps behind you and back smacks you from you know this like crevice right here or from under the bridge. So this is just dangerous. That's just that's like nitpicky of a habit that a lot of people do have trouble with, and you got to be careful about. It's like you get that guy one shot, you probably could have killed him if you just didn't thrust slide out now that guy's behind you. So, it's good that you at least had your thrust ready. It's fortunate, I should say. That's the better way of putting it. It's very fortunate that you were actually able to get your thrust back in time, but um, you could have had that kill on that guy on silo a lot sooner and just been more prepared for what's going on top mid. That's what I would say from that. Because, like, you kind of threw yourself into a situation where, like, that's, like, the best you could do, but you could have done more beforehand before actually dying there. Got the return on the flag. You just had to push up. This is... Mm. Okay, you definitely need to play for camo. So this is... Uh, let me just see. You're, you're, I, I think you might have recognized that camo might have been coming up. So let's see. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, definitely keep track of the time. Camo do was coming up, so... Needed to kind of make that turn around. Get up top quicker. You at least recognized it. Grabbed it to get away. It's good. Two guys are dead. Oh no. Okay, okay, okay. So, when you get camo like you just did, and like things are going in your team's favor right now, or at least I shouldn't say 
I mean, I guess it's in there in like your team's favor because you got camo at least, and you guys are just trading kills. So that's one, two trade, two dead. Yeah, this is actually good for you guys, and you got the flag pulled. Like as camo, you need to make sure that you're about to do something that's gonna like you're gonna actually accomplish something on top of just not dying right away. Because like the way you're handling right now, handling this right now is you're just straight lining this guy on porch. Not even aware of, you know, maybe somebody's, I don't know, somehow somebody could be BR or garage, somebody could be bottom mid, top mid like he is, a guy, I don't know, maybe another spawner somewhere coming from like silo. Just being out in the open like this does not do much with camo. Like camo is just more like a longevity type play uh, enhancer. Like you have to use it with like a bigger picture in mind. This is very, like you're using it just to move through straight down the middle when there's still two people alive and then two spawners coming up soon. And on top of that, this guy, like, you're not putting yourself in a good enough spot to get this kill quickly. So, what I suggest, I wish your teammate would have just tossed the flag out, but he decided to thrust out right away, is you probably could just walk through, walk straight through, toss a nade at the guy porch, and then just clean him up, pushing through the window. So, and then on top of that, I mean, these guys do spawn elbow, so that does kind of suck. Maybe they spawned elbow because you had, like, no influence here, though? I'm not too sure. Either way, you being out in the middle like this on porch, I think it's just kind of, it's just kind of dangerous. Like so, like, you're one shot now on porch, this is just a really bad spot for you to be in. Yeah, and you actually end up dying. So, I figured that would happen. Maybe you could have, like, worked your movement around there to stay alive but that, that's just that's a hard spot to be in man so you need to you need to have the bigger picture in mind like you are the guy that can easily stop camo like you were trying to but you just start walking like you don't even turn in you don't turn in towards the wall at all you just start walking straight ahead maybe even grab the light rifle chuck a nade because that's like this is instant territory to just get in the engine and get like a one shot or like a nade shot on this guy running flag but instead, you turn in, take your time, not the most perfect nade, the guy still lives with the flag, and now you're out in the open. And here's the thing that you have to recognize, too, is, like, these guys are not going to cap flag instantly. So there's no pressure, or there's no, like, really excessive pressure on you right now to make some big play very quickly. You easily can just get in, grab a light rifle, chuck a nade, you can even turn behind you just to make sure you're not going to get shot in the back which you just might if you start shooting too quickly, but you can just take your time to get behind this guy and flag um, and get a cleanup kill very quickly. So definitely try to utilize camo a little bit better there because you were definitely the playmaker in that situation to stop that cap. Two dead. Three dead. Where's the last guy? There you go. a little long to get that kill, but you stay alive. That's okay. Got your shields back. Ooh, I was just gonna say, I, I thought you were gonna walk out before you even got your shields, but you still kind of did the same thing. Um, in a situation like this, when you don't know exactly where everyone is, it and your teammate's running the flag like that, you probably don't want to just instantly full challenge out. Um, that's just, that's definitely kind of nitpicky. Just kind of be ready. You're definitely, you're also your reticle wasn't even placed for that guy at Big Door. You just gotta be a little bit more prepared. When things are going down like this, that people are gonna just be, they're just gonna be ready for you. Uh, they're just gonna be ready for the team to kind of flood in from wherever. They're just waiting. They're just waiting for you to walk in to their reticle like you just did. So either you be fully aggressive, waiting to, or trying to move between this and the battery, to play off the battery, but you need to play off your cover here. You need to poke out a little bit and just get in, get some information. You could even get a couple of shots in that guy that was on elbow. Or if you know, like you really do want to push through, then walk through and don't even really bother fighting that guy on elbow. And then you'd see this guy on the wall. But in general, you definitely need to play with your shields in mind. Uh, that they're just really, really low. Which you just really didn't. You kind of just instantly walked out and you weren't ready for somebody to know you were there. Yeah. And as soon as you get shot there, so here's the thing too, it's just it comes down to just the general lack of reaction. 
that's not something I can really just tell you to improve on. You're just gonna gonna have to. Like you get shot there, instant thrust back. If I get shot there, maybe I still make the same play as you. I I want to just be aggressive, and I turn in. As soon as I'm already weak and I get shot first, and I don't even know if that guy's one shot, I'm instantly thrusting to like the battery, uh, to like wrap back around. You just gotta play for survival right now, cause you dying there is just not, uh, it's not good at all. Not good for your team. I'm glad to hear that, Bars. Keep it up. Yo, what's good, Astro? Pick up Tac Mag, walking through. Um. I feel like this is just a little too stacked. I was gonna say, I don't know if Silo is really the play here. <coughs> Yeah, this is definitely not the play. So, I think somebody going silo is okay, but in this situation, when you're spawning porch, your teammate's top mid, like, you should try and support this man. <clears throat> try and just get eyes on him. Just look at him, try and get some shots. So you die here, spawn up engine, and pick up tag mag. Teammate and I agreed to push treehouse. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, you calmed that, and that's okay. But one thing I just want to say is, like, if a teammate's out top mid like this, I don't know, th this is just how I, I play it. I don't think everyone in general always thinks this way, but I'm going to try and maybe just support my teammate here, is what I, I'm thinking. At least for, like, a second. Like, just take a second. We don't, you don't even need to push out instantly right away. Especially since elbow's wide open. Like, your teammate ends up spawning elbow, I think. No, he, nobody even spawns elbow. Like, you guys also need to have control of your treehouse on top of that. It needs to be, like, very coordinated, too. Like, just pushing out one side of the map right away, with the other side being just a complete void, it's going to be kind of rough in general. You just don't have that much support. And your teammate already being top mid like that, uh, it's kind of rough and not the best idea since you guys were off respawn. I don't know why he was just top mid the way he was, but he was still full shields top mid and you guys spawn porch. Maybe just watch him for a second. Or just be aware. Like, he starts getting shot and you don't even turn. He literally just got gunned down and this man just dropped from top mid. So that's just really bad awareness out of you. I'm going to be real. Like, that guy just got shot twice, three times in your field of view and you didn't even turn. So, okay, you, you got the like the communication, let's push treehouse, but something important is happening that's a lot more relevant right here. And this guy's also gunning to just go straight for the flag. Go straight to your base. And he also could just set himself up to shoot you guys in the back if you had a fight at, at that silo. So... You definitely need to be a lot more aware of what's going on there. Oh my god, the guy's sitting back there. Oh, uh, this is just... That's rough. That's really rough. So yeah. <clears throat> that guy made a play. You guys didn't check your corners. That is what it is. But on the way there, you 100% need to be aware that this guy is just shooting your teammate like that. So if I'm calling out that guy top mid. And I'm seeing both my teammates silo. I'm actually pissed. I don't know if he didn't call it out. If you guys just didn't actually listen. Um, but this guy just getting through like that is 100% uh, something that can't happen. And you and your teammate both did the same thing. You and Ferocity here. Neither of you looked. Which, it's just bad for both of you guys to do that. And then you end up not checking your corners. Always check your corners. And I get you killed. Next time, should I push Blue Elbow or Blue Tree? Oh, next time. Like I said... It's okay that you got the communication to push out Treehouse, but th in this particular situation, there's a couple things, like I said, that are just very important. You already had a teammate who was standing top mid full shields. So that push, that like instant push off to Treehouse, I think is just kind of... Um, I, I Honestly, I think it's kind of unnecessary because you already have somebody that's really far out um, like with you. Maybe one of you guys go push silo. But like I said, if this is me and I see my teammate top mid, like I said, he's full shields. This guy's perfectly fine. I think he's definitely not making the best play with his life. Like, he should be a lot more aware that these guys are just going to be all around him. But 
uh, if this is me, I'm probably going to maybe just post up on the porch and just watch them. Because if, if somebody's out here like this... Yo, Righteous, thank you so much for the four months. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. If somebody's out top mid like this, I'm going to just watch them because that guy is bound to get shot and, like, chased at some point. So maybe I could get some damage, keep him alive, maybe get a kill. That's probably what I'm thinking. So it's not ne it's it's not necessarily about what is the right or wrong place to push here. It's more so about you made a call, but then more more important information started going down. Like this guy top mid is just shooting your teammate in the back, and just look at you guys. Look at this. Like you can't let that happen. It's on both of you. It's not just one of you. It's both of you needed to recognize. One of you, at least, needed to recognize that this was happening. What should the guy top mid should have done? Should he have been there in the first place? Like I said, being top mid when his entire team was kind of um, on respawn is probably not the best. Like, they're going to do this. They're going to, like, double push up tree or double push out, like, silo and jump up. So what I said was, like, if he is already caught out top mid... He just needed to be, like, more aware. He needed to, like, try and find just one person to fight and force a 1v1. Because the guy that was up here took, like, a 1v2 into one guy being behind him right here. So if this is me, like, top mid, I'd probably just try and watch my jump up and then, like, maybe walk forward. Because if that guy could have just jumped off top mid and start walking forward in their flag, it's kind of like a trade-off. That guy top mid might have done the same thing, but... Uh, in general, just being top mid like he was, and he was just kind of, you know, he's just jumping up, up and down, taking a fight, that's not what you want to do. If you're in, like, a outpost position like this, you need to make sure you're staying alive, and there's kind of no real room <clears throat> for that. He's not really meant to stay alive here when the entire red team's pushing up. So he might want to just watch his jump up, maybe drop down, could have maybe just drop down and held the wall or gone an engine, gone on their flag, any of those things. Any of those things. But definitely, that lack of awareness for that guy top mid is what is wrong with this situation. Because Here's what happens. Here's what happens. I'll give you the rundown. Because this is definitely a very important thing happening right here. Is <clears throat> something's happening. You have the communication. Let's do something. But then something more important happens. Or something more important, ver or something very important close to you happens. Like, this guy right here is so much more impactful than these guys all the way over here, around the corner. Like, you're, this is like that sphere of influence that I'm talking about. Obviously, you want to maybe do something more forward on the map, but there's something in a very important position right here happening as well. Bearded Jedi with the four months. Back to the sickest stream. Feel better? Yo, Bearded, I really appreciate that, man. And thank you for the streak. Appreciate that resub. I don't have my hype emote for some reason, but I'll drop some love for that sub. Thank you. Thank you for the resub. So, this is something very important. You just can't turn your keep your back turned to this guy. Kind of surprised he didn't even shoot you guys. I don't know if he was actually making the five-head play and just moving ahead. I think he just decided not to shoot or didn't see you guys somehow. <laughs> because if you kill that guy, like, think about it. Say you turn, take this fight with this guy... Well, then that means that this is basically a free jump up, and your teammate can kind of push in behind from Silo. That's some good nades right there, but, like, maybe chuck a nade and then jump up. Or just have your reticle ready for, like, the treehouse fight, and then your teammate pushes in from Silo into the treehouse to flank behind. But this is the kind of, like, an adaptation in the middle of a game, in just a split second that you need to have. Is like, you can't just make that decision to go tower and then just a hundred percent stick to it or tree and stick to it just because you said it now if there's no other information going down your teammate was still top mid never died it's like okay well just commit to it but something was happening here you got to be more aware that's that's what that boils down to painful to watch yeah i mean but that that's good it's painful to watch hopefully you learn a lot more from it you know it'll burn into your brain and see you both end up dying there. That's rough. That's really rough. And they ran that flag. That guy that was top mid just ran that flag in for them. From one side to the next. So that was definitely pretty rough. And I've really been paying attention to this. So you're on porch now. But let's move on. So 
just up that awareness. Be aware of what's happening around you, especially if comms are going down. Uh, like I said, I don't have that to like listen to, so I don't know if you were keeping track of that. Beaver with the 13 months. Got to get in here more to support you. I've been in 13 months for four months now. I hope all is well. <laughs> it's all good, Beaver. I, I still appreciate it, man. Still appreciate it. Over the one year, drop some love, drop some love. I still appreciate the sub and the support, even if it's a little late or later down the line. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll just move on from that. So, the point was you got to be able to adapt to the situation, especially in that sphere of influence. Whatever's close by, that's just very pressing, especially when a guy's pushing your flag from top mid. But again, you guys decided to push out silo. Oh, that's just unfortunate. Okay, but you win the gunfight. Mm. I don't know. I don't really know if there's much to say to that. It was just kind of staggered. That was just kind of rough. Your teammates getting weak. You're just kind of waiting for them. I was going to say, like, the only thing that I can kind of, like, nitpick about that situation is, like... Once you are sitting where you're sitting for so long, like maybe be aware that there could be a guy just pushing right behind you. But even then, it's just like, you know, there could have been a guy that just pushes down bottom nades or something. Like what I'm saying in this fight is like, just know that after you take this fight, there's probably going to be a guy right where that guy is or just in this general vicinity. Um, those kind of calculated assumptions are like what can keep you alive in a lot of these situations like the way i see this and like why I, it is nitpicky for me to say this so i'll just break this down um this is how like a lot of pro players i think kind of can stay alive in a lot of situations is just like calculated assumptions and like guesses where like if i take that fight i'm probably walking forward at that guy just to walk forward and get around this corner because there could be a guy here or there could be even a second guy in the sub but I think that's a lot less likely for a guy to be here than there is going to be a guy right here. So that's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Bearded, thank you so much for the gifted one, or gifted tier one as well to Mello. Welcome, Mello. To the Z Fighters, enjoy your emotes. Thank you, Bearded, for that sub. So that this is something that's very nitpicky, but also is definitely important to recognize these situations or just recognize like what you kind of think is more or less likely so not the biggest deal but something that you can maybe keep in the back of your mind forever diego as well subscribing with the twitch prime i appreciate it guys thank you for all these subs thank you thank you welcome You're special thank you forever i appreciate that i appreciate that the message and i appreciate the sub enjoy the emotes and welcome welcome everybody so, and this applies to a bunch of different situations, a bunch of different um, maps. Like, these type of percentage plays and percentage, like, assumptions and guesses are just happening all the time. Uh, it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. This isn't, like, the most impactful thing in the world. It's just something that I wanted to make you aware of so you can start maybe thinking about it a little bit in your gameplay. Who's on the chopping block now? Uh, this is Riot. Um, okay, so this is kind of a similar situation as before, where you were in your flag and you just soared to your teammates, where there's already a couple people, a couple, like the numbers are already somewhere, kind of stacked somewhere. I don't think you need to be here. I think in this situation, if this is me, I'm probably thrust sliding back to my flag, just to keep guys like this backed up, like pushed back, and they have to fight me to get back into the base. Um... Micey, hopefully I said that right, what's up? Welcome. So, oh, can I be a sub and get some gameplay review to watch your YouTube video? Days, uh, improved, but still can't do much. Uh, forever, I do gameplay reviews for 20,000 channel points or $20. Um, I do not do it just for subs currently, I'm sorry. But as I was saying, um, it's already kind of stacked here. I don't think they need the support. They could definitely use the complimentary position of 
uh, you could be walking out shooting that guy on bridge, or you would have seen this guy just sprinting out from top mid and got an easy few shots or even a five shot kill on this guy, just, you know, jumping out like that. So, definitely think just running up here is not the best. Like, you get that kill, but I think, like, that kill would have already happened and you could have maybe even gotten some more, like, on that guy that was diving in from, from blue here. Um... Like I said, I think it still stands. Playing your life, got some good shots. Getting some cleanups. Ooh, be careful. Playing your life. Yo, Bearded also getting the 200 bits, and that was a good play right there. Good stuff on your part, Riot. Just kind of playing your life. It was able to outplay these guys. Keep dropping some love for that. Thank you, Bearded, for subs, the bits. Let me rewatch this. Hmm. Yep. And a nice little back smack on that guy. That was good. Good outplay. And they end up getting camo. Ooh, good kill on camo. So that was all good. That was all good. Um, one thing I will say about all that's been going on like this in past like 30 seconds is if you decided to oh dude I want to go back there we go I want to stay on your POV so I can kind of see it from the start so wait a second oh yeah this is way far back actually where are you there you are so you spawn silo so, as I was going to say, is if you just decided to go straight back from Silo here, like, maybe you even took a second just to kind of, like, get the lay of the field, see what's going on. You just start walking out, and maybe you kill this guy that's dropping from top mid, and you kill this guy that's just standing out in the open, or you just clean up the, the guy that's basically one shot over there. Like, that's one to two kills that you could have gotten instantly, and then both your teammates are probably still alive helping you and you guys probably could have gotten that camo. Um, you probably could have gotten the camo that ends up not going your way. Like, So this is the way I see it, is everything you did here, you did well. You did well with the situation you kind of put yourself in. And you were able to stay alive. However, the most efficient like way that this could have gone down, if you made maybe a little bit better of a play with your positioning at the start, is you don't have to get the kills, and your teammates don't have to die in the way that it happens here. If that makes sense. All this could have kind of been avoided, and you guys could have probably been in a better spot if you just went back to porch. And then you wouldn't have to be getting shot from up here. You know, these guys wouldn't have had the position that they would have had. Because your teammates are now too dead, I think, right? Maybe your teammate just spawned up. Yeah, I think one of your teammates just spawned up. Because you guys went too dead, and I think you get three kills here. Um, which is just, like, like I said, you did what you could do, but it could have been a lot better if you just made the bigger picture play early on. Um, because this camo just kind of pops up, and they get it. Just like that. Like I said, individual performance by you, great. However, you could have done some bigger things. Main thing is awareness, and just not, not just being fast. Being efficient doesn't always mean being fast. Yeah, pretty much, I'd definitely say that. Yo, Kissified, how's it going? Yeah, so, like, you did what you did well. It's just that you shouldn't necessarily be be in the position because like now what I'm talking about now is almost more like because obviously this is like solid gameplay and solid lobby all around so now we're getting into a little bit more in-depth sort of rather than just basic you know shot like hitting your shots simple placement of like where you should be um, this is definitely like a longer bigger picture thing like I'm talking about where you needed to be here so that effectively you guys would have gotten that camo rather than him like, it's great that you're still alive here, but really you shouldn't be. You just outplay the fuck out of those guys. But you're not always going to outplay those people in every single game, and that's where a lot of people fall short, is they just continue to make the same decisions, but, you know, they're just not keeping up with their shot or whatever, their movement. What do you mean about a solid lobby? Uh, solid lobby meaning, like, I think, like you said, this is, this is just some eights with some decent players. So, solid skill all around. Like, these aren't these aren't just like typical 
like worst players or you know gold level type. That's all I'm saying. No, this is this is eights. Yeah, I'll go against that. So it's great that this all turned out fine and you were able to hit your shots, even if you weren't hitting all of your shots, of course. And like, great, you just made some great plays. But it could have all been avoided, and maybe your teammates were alive, and maybe you guys got camo. Um, with some better positioning. And now it seems like you're kind of charging forward a little too aggressive, because maybe you're just a little hyped up from all the plays you're making. Again, um, this is maybe just a little bit... Like, you're just sprinting out, slide into an instant nade, into a position you expect somebody to be here. So if you expect someone to be here and you want to nade it, like, why would you, you know, why would you sprint, jump, like, slide, jump out in the open for that? You could easily just get right here, chuck a nade, and peek to get the same effect and be a lot safer. So definitely be a lot safer in this situation because this just costed you your life right there when it was definitely a very preventable death. I think that was maybe because you're just, you're just hyped up. You're just going. Oh, there's people top mid again. So maybe you want to push tree like you do. However, um, going tree in this position is just not, it's just not ideal. Like I think your teammates are running the flag towards the silo here. They are. Like, you're really, really taking yourself out of this play right here. There's even a guy on your flag. That kind of sucks. So, on top of that, you're really setting yourself up to just be so far out of the play. Because if I'm you in this situation, I'm just going to sit on, on the porch for a second. Like, maybe this guy wouldn't even have shot you. Like, he might have just shot you here to let you know, like, there's a fight that's happening. Uh, and that would have been at least a little bit more relevant than you're actually being running away from it. But if this is me, like, maybe you walk out, I turn instantly. I check my silo, make sure I'm not going to get shot, but then I turn instantly, like, top mid to just see if I can help my teammates who are right there. Because, ultimately, you need to be working with your teammates, and you're really taking just such a long time if you're going to run through this route to even go top mid. Like, I don't know what your plan is here, but, like, just see that you're letting your teammate die, getting shot in the back. By that guy, there's a guy pulling your flag. Your, your team is running the flag through sub, and now you're just getting to the top mid. So this is definitely the fast versus like efficient type of awareness again with like what you could have been doing. Where it's like, even if you just stood still for a couple seconds and checked like top mid, maybe you kill this guy, maybe you don't. But then you could have, if your goal is to get top mid or top tree, you could just jump up to top mid and then go tree. I usually opt to go to Treehouse from top mid, if I can, rather than taking the long route from Silo. That's not to say that I do that every single time, but in a position like this, when your teammates are over here, they're definitely on this side of the map. They're on your Treehouse side. So you want to try and have a little bit more focus with them over there, rather than, like I said, taking yourself completely out of the play. And just, let's look at the timer real quick. Let's look at the timer and just see how long you were kind of like out of it. Like out of uh, the play. Or just out of the game, essentially. So, let's see. You spawn up. It's now 7.17. You look top mid through the wall, but 7.17. You didn't look top mid. Teammates are taking the fight and taking the flag through. Still looking through. Now you turn top mid, now you're going through treehouse, and about over 10 seconds have passed, and your entire team just died, and they're running the flag in. So, you really took yourself out of the play with the route you took, and routes are really important, and that's why, like, positioning is so important. Because obviously, silo into treehouse can be important at times, but not at this time. Not at all. Your team was running a flag, your teammate was top mid, and... Um, but essentially this, let me rewind it again, this side of silo, like this is just so irrelevant. This is irrelevant right now. It can be relevant at times, but right now it does not matter at all. Top mid and like your side of the map is what matters. This all matters. 
if you were to do anything more relevant, you know, this of course still matters because if you were sitting porch, you could have shot this guy, but like keeping your teammates alive or just keeping the information available to you by just being anywhere in this general part of the map would do a lot more than what you do by just, like I said, you completely cut yourself off. Now you can't, like I said, you can't do anything from right here. You can't do anything from right here. So that's definitely why it just results in you being completely out of the play. A lot of, a lot of bad habits for sure. Um, but skill, like I said, still good. Like you're individually doing well, but you are definitely, uh, definitely messing up in more so the awareness, like the general awareness of like your habits, where you're trying to route yourself, where you're trying to go to help a teammate, helping a teammate in general. Send you my bookmark. I got you. Got you.